is up, Humanoid Nation? So today's reaction, the final reaction for today, is by What Culture. The video is from What Culture. These guys are amazing if you're a wrestling fan. So today is 13 wrestlers in situations that scared the shit out of them. There's got to be plenty more than that, but hey, you got to narrow it down to 13, unlucky 13. So let's see from what Adam from What Culture has brought us this time. Let's do this. While we're all quick to mourn Wait, the death of Kane fame like a beloved pet, so long, Rover, there have been many instances throughout the years when not only was it very much alive, but it possessed some fans to do terrifying things. Hell, even years after the business was exposed, many wrestlers found themselves in situations that scared the out of them. Far more scary than what you or I have to deal with, most certainly. The only thing we have to fear is being forced to sit through an Alicia Fox match. Oh, oh shit! There's been many a time well, when wrestlers put in a less than enviable or spot. Or Marie I'm match. Simon from What Culture, and this is 13 wrestlers in situations that scared the out of them. Number 13, when Ric Flair caused a riot. When was this? Back in the day, wrestling was real. Every match was presented and digested as a shoot. It has also meant some fans were nuts. In the mid-80s, Ric Flair was the NWA. So much more than just being the champion, he was talking about the one in Puerto Rico traveling the world when people were pissed. Gold. Unfortunately, the most passionate pro wrestling supporters were often found overseas, which also meant that they paid and expected their hometown heroes to win. If they didn't, well, they'll just tear down an entire arena. Yeah. Okay. People this didn't is exactly give a fuck. What happened when the Nature Boy took on local man Jack Menino in the Dominican Republic? Oh, all right, the Dominican Republic. Just to watch he almost died that day. Thirty thousand. Him losing would be the equivalent of a national tragedy. Or when Alicia Fox is booked to win a match, realizing the sensitivity <laughs> of the situation, a finish was put in place where the bell was rung as Flair passed out from a sleeper. It was impossible to tell who actually won, and Flair danced out the building quicker than Nathan Jones's WWE career. Oh! The thing he did too! Oh. The fans rioted by throwing chairs and fighting military police. Crazy. Number the 12, Republic John Cena crosses give Vince a McMahon. The ending to the 2005 Royal Rumble is incredible. When John Cena and Batista went over the top rope and hit oh, the outside at exactly the oh, same time, man and the breaking his over stood and applauded the execution. Only the being a dumb Accident. Still a rookie, all things considered. Cena pulled out the animal by mistake, ruining the planned finish to the match. As if that wasn't bad enough, the situation was about to get a whole lot worse. Infuriated by what he'd seen, Vince McMahon came storming down the aisle to stop the comedy and to chastise all involved. He then proceeded to slide into the ring. He just sat there, like a child, who had just been told by their parents that the car was being I, turned around. And that idea, I couldn't stop laughing what my actually ass happened off. is McMahon had somehow pulled both quad muscles, leaving him unable to stand. Can you imagine how terrifying Cena must have been going backstage? Vince's wrath must have been horrendous. No, I don't ever. think so. The tribute to the troop show. Cena is WWE's Vince's boy. Yearly tribute to the troop show is special. He gives them money and shit. Humanity. The company has always been keen to give back to the armed forces that put their lives on the line for their country. The crew who head to the shows travel to legitimate war zones made all the more real when in 2006 a mortar attack took place very close to WWE's base. It was so near, Michael Cole even covered the incident that tragically also took the lives of 14 US soldiers. Shit. It must be quite unnerving to head out on one of these trips, which also makes it all the more admirable. Number 10. The Undertaker kills Mankind. I love when Rob Van Dam flat out said, no, I'm not going. At work. You and he got so buried for that. Sure, Even when they said, like, what cultures Adam Blampi, you're allowed to either not go or go, so which means you're supposed to go. Back. Or in this case, on a video. The world of professional wrestling is a very different beast mind. It is fair to say that The Undertaker must have thought he'd ended Mick Foley's life in June of 1998. Would you blame him? Marcus off the 16 feet head of the cell is Man, everyone thought mankind died that day. There? Well, just take a look at Taker's face post Hurl. This was a legitimate reaction, too. When Foley asked the dead man how he felt after the spot, he simply replied, I thought you were dead. Jeez. Number nine. Taking Big Show's moonsault. Who in their right mind signed up for oh, the Big Show doing a moonsault? And I Back in WCW. Giving Alicia Fox a run with the Divas Championship. Man, so much shade on Alicia Fox thing. This was the signature of the giant as he learned the ropes in WCW's power plant developmental system. A badge of honor for Paul White, he prided himself on his size and athletic ability. Thankfully, people saw sense once he made it onto TV and the move was banned. That is until Show asked the one and only Kevin Nash if he 
can do the spot in their upcoming match. The response? No offense, but I'm not taking that. Not yeah. too hard to Would understand you? that one. Think of the poor souls who had to lay on the mat and wait for that to hit. Sheesh. Number eight. Kurt Angle and Daniel Oh Pugh my god, Pugh. Pewter almost like broke his leg just to sit or arm or whatever the fuck the situation you're in. Otherwise, you upset Kurt Angle. And who really wants to upset Kurt Angle? Former Tough Enough winner Daniel Pewter, apparently. Back in 2004, a Tough Enough competition aired on Hey, look, it's right back. Champion called Baby right back. in the ring for a wrestle, which kind of sounds like a dad talking to his son. With no script in place, you would assume each member of Tough Enough would get schooled by Angle. He's a gold medal winner, for goodness sake. This was all going to plan at first, too. Poor Chris Norocki, for example, ended up with a broken Ooh. rib. When Pewter entered the ring, however, he decided he'd put his legit MMA training to good use. Forget lying down just to not rattle the status quo. This was war. Or Slapping on a Kimura and almost breaking you know, he like arm, almost embarrassed the guy. In. Angle could have tapped to a nobody rookie, but he's not going to get very far with his arm in 42 pieces either. Seeing a problematic situation was brewing, a nearby ref quickly countered Pewter's shoulders down. And it ran like hell. Up, sending Angle into a serious rage. Can you imagine how scared he must have been that some kid could have shown him up? And Pewter's well being must have been all over the place as he shifted to the back. The chewing out would have surely been horrendous. Number seven. Ric Flair goes behind enemy lines. Don't go to North Korea. It's the best travel advice Shit. you'll ever receive. Even more so back in 1995, when leader Kim Jong-il ruled a terrorist-led country where public dissension was punishable by death. This was the same man, don't and yet forget, who forced the media to tell the nation he had achieved the world golf scoring record. I had no proof, huh? seriously. And yet despite all this, WCW and New Japan made the trip in the mid-90s, dragging along Ric Flair and Muhammad Ali of all people for good measure. It didn't go well. Their passports were confiscated. They were attached to minders so they couldn't act up. It was a bust of a tour. Made worse when Ali shouted, No wonder we hate these mother in the middle of a Korean speech. Oh, as Flair shit. said in his autobiography, Surprise, Muhammad Ali didn't die. He stood up on my head. Oh, shit, I whispered. Don't start talking now. Number six, taking the giant fall. Some of the bumps wrestlers take leave you at a loss for words. Sure, the buzz from an arena and the reaction of a crowd must serve as an awesome source of motivation. But just think how scary it must be before the move goes down. We've seen plenty over the years, too. Shane McMahon leaping off the Titan Tron. Edge spearing Mick Foley through a burning table. The aforementioned Mankind, Helen a cell fall. These men aren't superheroes, they're human beings. They can. Their bodies they break. break. Out of all of these, though, Jeff Hardy's antics stand out by quite some distance. Either having a death Jeff or some a crazy strange illness bitch. that means if he doesn't try and kill himself, he'll die anyway. The man has swung on from more precarious positions than is necessary. Just search for Hardy at WrestleMania 2000, or his giant 30 foot dime onto Randy Orton from Raw in 2008. He looks terrified, and rightfully so. Looks like he's what is terrifying. Number five. He looks like he's his a big mistake. You know that feeling ah, you get as soon as you do something oh, wrong no. and how you desperately start wishing for time to revert We're talking so about you can the make amends? One we're, Owen Hart entirely. we're talking about that one, aren't we? Dropping Steve Austin directly on his neck and breaking it in the process during that year's SummerSlam was the equivalent of picking up your friend's factory-sealed 1977 Darth Vader figure and tearing open the box. Austin was the future of oh, we are talking about the and now his Cold career thing. was hanging in the balance. Owen knew this too, and the fallout from the injury would literally cost Vince McMahon millions of dollars, let alone the fear that Hart must have felt from Austin potentially being wheelchair-bound for the rest of his life. On the flip side, Stone Cold must have been scared shitless too. He couldn't feel anything below his neck right after the move hit, a scenario no one should ever have to find themselves in. Number four, Big Show's face and Mayweather's fists. Poor Big Show. The man may be seven feet tall and 500 pounds, but he's treated like WWE's oversized whipping boy. This was never yeah. more true than at No Way Out in 2008, where the giant was told that Floyd Mayweather, a professional and tremendous boxer, was going to punch him in the face. Repeatedly. He was not the ready. Place. The start of a feud that would culminate at WrestleMania 24, Big Show did indeed take his battering and more than likely had a broken nose after it was done. His face looked like a bag of broccoli. There's no way Show didn't have the fear that night. Who wouldn't? And then he cried. Brock Lesnar beats up John Cena. We've all seen a Brock Lesnar match, and we've all been glad we're not City. on the receiving end of it. The man legitimately smacks people around, an approach that makes all his matches both believable and entertaining. So imagine how scared you'd be when the man had not only just come back to the WWE, but had spent his time away beating people up for real. That's the situation that faced yeah, but John, we knew John Cena. Yeah, John Cena won. MMA fight John Cena won that shit, so it didn't really matter. Entertainment. Their match at Extreme Rules 2012 was set out to be 
ultra realistic. This meant in the opening stages that Brock took Cena down for real before unleashing a volley of Wait, pound elbows really? into his head. Into his head! And just look at Brock. Even if he's working those shots, they will hurt like hell. Fair play to Cena though, Good as point. he accepted the challenge, even if deep down he had reservations. Who else would have had the balls? Number two, Vince Hebner and Michaels in Montreal. Oh god, we're back to this. Stand on the Montreal screw job. There must have been a lot of anxiety and worry that night in 1997. Not only was Vince McMahon going to con one of the biggest stars in the business, but he had to make sure no one found out about it. There's just no way that all happens in a calm and peaceful way. Such emotion was well founded, with Brett punching Vince in the face before the night was through, raising the tension even higher. Furthermore, Earl Hebner must have felt like a rat trapped in a cage. A close friend of Hart, he had Earl scored his like no, man. that he, he just double -crossed booked Brett. it out of the building. This was a bad lie, and B, that, that he already had a car waiting he came back to next he night. Whisked away. But he just Earl must have fucked off. Mess. Even Michaels felt the pinch that night, admitting later on how deeply he regrets the whole thing. Is the what do we think about Triple H who masterminded the thing? He was long part of time. it too. Much like you feel. Are we gonna get his side of the story? Match. No. Number one. Okay. Shawn Michaels and Mike Tyson's fist. Shawn Michaels was not a happy chap before WrestleMania 15. He was upset about dropping the WWF Championship to Stone Cold like Steve Austin. Like the bullshitter that he was. He was upset about his back injury. He was back upset then. about the fact he was upset. Throw in his drink and drug problems and Michaels was not in a good place. During such times, the saying, well, at least it can't get any worse, is usually of some comfort. But unfortunately that didn't ring true for the heartbreak kid. When he was at his lowest point, he got told that Mike Tyson, who was legitimately considered the baddest man on the planet, was going he to was punch back him in the day. really hard. Going down at the end of the Mania match, Michaels got in Tyson's face as planned after the boxer revealed he had sided with the rattlesnake or Cold Stone, as good old Mike used to call him. Cold Not one to Stone. withstand such a verbal tirade, Tyson whacked Sean right on the jaw. The look on Michaels' face during all of this was priceless. Clearly terrified that Iron Mike would knock him out for real, it got even worse when Tyson draped a t-shirt over HBK's face post-slug. That was not in the script. And really? Michaels wasn't shy about telling people how it made him feel when he got backstage. Pro wrestling can still really? be quite the scary You're bitching about Mike Tyson. How exposed it may would now you, be. Why would you Make bitch sure about like, Mike Tyson? And subscribe, and you can find me well, Sean Sean Michael, of course on bitch. Twitter. I've been Simon from What Culture, and here's to a scare-free existence. So yeah, that's a video from What Culture. Like, yeah, there's got to be more than that. But they, like I said before. They gotta lower it down to something like they can't be doing this all day. There's gotta be a lot of shit. Like imagine like the whole Brian Pillman Stone Cold Gun thing. I, I don't know if they knew what that was gonna happen or if Brian Pillman just went off the book by that and just brought in a gun because like you know Brian Pillman, he's a crazy bastard. Like you don't know if like his character was a part of him or it really was him. I still don't know to this day because that's why they actually call him a loose cannon because like you never knew about that guy. But yeah, Ric Flair and Muhammad Ali in Japan, North Korea, that's got to scare the shit out of everyone. Like, yeah, you're phoning people home and like there's people on the other line listening to what you have to say and you got to be careful what you say. You got to read Ric Flair's book because Scott Norton was bitching and then like his phone got hang up. It was that kind of bullshit. But anyway, that's a video from What Culture. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye. Vivir así